All right, guys. <clears throat> it is a spectacularly gorgeous and I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in paradise, in Chulha, Mexico. This is my last night in Chulha, Mexico, possibly for my entire life. <coughs> Who knows on this glorious, it is a Monday, February 20th, 2023, as I uh, wind down, well, start to think about winding down my trip to Mexico, but uh, instead of doing a Mexican rant. I, I just want to do, I, I guess a quick, uh, just an angry bitch rant. Just a fucking angry bitch rant. Uh, you know, I go on to medium.com today and, you know, to get my doom and gloom, well, it, it packed in with the various doom and gloom, not one, but two stories from these angry bitches talking about angry men you know just beat up on the on the angry men this seems to be the new meme it's you know i guess it started with narcissist and now it's i, I guess the new uh word of the day for angry bitches is incel is the new word of the day that uh, if if some man thinks you're being a snotty little angry bitch, obviously he is minimally a narcissist and probably an incel because he doesn't want to listen to your fucking nasty, bitchy, toxic, psycho bitch mouth anymore. I want you to shut the fuck up, bitch. So you, you listen to these angry bitches going off on their fucking rants about all the angry men out there. Like the only people on this planet who are pissed off are men. That, that, that I guess every fucking woman on this planet is just this sweet little angel. Just this absolute sweet little angel. And so they go flying off in, in their goddamn angry man rants. Like, there's no such thing as a fucking angry woman that, uh, that I guess in, 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 these, in these angry bitches' minds that, that men have some sort of, have cornered the market on anger. <laughs> oh, God. I've been thinking a lot about angry women since learning about the, uh, the death of my dear sweet ex-wife. Uh, a couple of days ago, I, not, I don't mean she died, ago. I mean, I learned a couple of days ago that this uh, angry, uh, toxic woman died eight years ago, and because she had so few friends on the planet, uh, it took eight years for me to even figure out uh, that, that she was dead. Uh, Jesus. I am an expert on angry women. Trust me, I was <laughs> I, I was married to one for seven years. Now, of course, it could be argued that I was the source of a lot of her anger. Uh, <laughs> I won't, won't totally deny that, but I do think it's safe to say if you uh, <clears throat> were to interview our friends in common, and were to ask them, okay, which one of these two was, was the angrier of the two? Was it Hambone or was it Caroline? I honestly think even the women uh, <laughs> would say that uh, Caroline certainly uh, uh, topped Hambone in the, in the anger scale, in the angry woman scale. Oh, Lord. But anyway, I'm not here to besmirch the reputation of my dear, sweet, late, late, great ex-wife. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, just, you know, reading this shit, uh, acting like th that uh, men, that we're the only ones who ever get angry. 
uh, and, and that these poor suffering women dealing dealing with it with us angry men you know I'm, I'm thinking you know who are the angriest people I have ever known in my entire fucking life I mean not counting myself of course not counting myself and that's kind of an unfair you know what I'm saying but other people I have known well obviously <clears throat> I mean, hands down, number one, with no person in, in close second place, the nastiest, angriest human being I have ever met was that fucking psycho bitch, we'll call her Lulu, uh, down there in Florida, who finally uh, did me, did her children, uh, did her neighbors, and did herself a uh, favor by putting a fu fucking bullet through her head uh, a couple of years ago. My God, I, I, I mean that fucking bitch. I, I, I could take the five angriest uh, men I've ever known in my life, combined them, and uh, and the five angriest men I have ever known combined. All right, would not hold a candle to that fucking bitch. I, I mean, I mean, she was nasty. She was rotten to the core. She was just. Uh, she was irredeemable. Uh, there, there's. She was just irredeemable. Uh, she was better off dead, and she fucking figured it out. And the world is a better place with that angry fucking bitch off of it. So I do want to thank her for doing one kind gesture to the world by putting a fucking bullet through her head. And then, uh, as, as, as some of you, a very few of you, uh, might, might have figured out, I recently came... Uh, in, into contact with uh, th th this fucking nasty psycho bitch uh, that might have put Lulu, you know, to the test as being the most, as being the angriest human being I've ever met. I only knew the fucking bitch uh, for a few weeks. She lives in the same town as Lulu. Uh, good fucking God. This toxic fucking bitch. Uh, I mean, I barely knew the woman. And, uh, good fucking God. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. You know, how many of these goddamn psycho bitches uh, that I have met down here in the Dumasphere? Uh, Dulcinea probably would have turned into one. I... <laughs> You know, now I never, I never had Dulcinea uh, it inflicted upon me. Uh, I mean, she was always nothing but a, you know, but a sweetheart to me. But I have an idea that uh, <laughs> somewhere in the heart of Dulcinea, uh, it, it probably would not have taken that much of a trigger. Speaking of triggers and speaking, let's talk. Talking. Uh, uh, let, let, well, I've I've never had the. Uh, I guess it's the pleasure of dating a uh, a Mexican woman. I, I I have heard tales of uh, dating a Mexican woman. Now I was dating a. Uh, an Ecuadorian, while well, she was born in Ecuador, but spent most of her life in Spanish Harlem. Uh, now, she was a pistol. Doris was a pistol, but she certainly, you know, probably because she was raised in the U.S. And, uh, but I did have the, uh, <laughs> the interesting experience of dating a Puerto Rican woman a a uh, few years back my only uh, Puerto Rican uh, woman that I have ever 
I wouldn't call it dating. Uh, she, she was basically just uh, bumming some free rent and meals uh, at my house. Uh, this was in Eugene, Oregon at Chateau Fiasco. Uh, and, you know, I mean, she was paying with pussy. Okay, I mean, I will fully admit, you know, she was some hot little uh, Puerto Rican firecracker. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it was a fair trade. She got uh, free room and board, and, and I got some hot, little, little hotty Puerto Rican pussy. Uh, so, I, I thought the terms of the arrangement were... Uh, were fairly well understood between us. But you know, I, I, I would spend every winter in Costa Rica. Well, it was getting closer and closer to the time that I was going to Costa Rica for five months. And she was showing no signs of moving out of, uh, you know, the Hambone Hilton. And I finally just, you know, uh, woke up one morning and uh, after I got my rent paid for the last fucking time, I said, well, darling, you know, I, I, I said, I'm just curious what you're planning to do here uh, this winter. And she just just uh, nonchalantly tells me she's planning to hang out uh, at my house for the winter till I get back from Costa Rica. And I, I said, darling... I said, I think you are aware that I've rented my house out. And you're not going to be spending the winter here. And uh, so I could feel the... Uh, I could feel it coming. Well, I had to go, go to work that day. I was actually working on an alpaca farm outside of Eugene. And I, and, and I, and I said, darling, I said, I am sorry. Uh, I said, it's been fun blah 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 but I'm out of here next week and, and I got someone else moving into this house and then you know the ham bone bar and grill is closed for the winter that's what I told her and I said you need to pack your shit and you need to be out of this house by the time I get back this afternoon so I told her that so she's just lying there in bed fuming and uh, while well, I'm getting ready to go to work at the fucking alpaca farm, <clears throat> so I said, you need to be gone when I get back in eight hours. Uh, and walked out the door, got in my truck, and drove off. And uh, when I got back home, I knew it was suspicious when I saw smoke coming out of the chimney. Uh, at the top of uh, Chateau Fiasco. And because I had told this uh, little bitch that, you know, how, sa how unsafe the wood stove and the chimney were and that my house could easily burn down to the ground if anyone started a fire in the wood stove. And so she knew... Uh, you know, it was getting chilly. It was late October in Oregon. She knew goddamn well uh, that she could have burned my house down uh, by starting a fire. That's exactly what she was trying to do, is burn my house down. So I pull up in the driveway, and I, uh, and, and I step out of my truck, and this little bitch erupts from my front door. She's got a hoe in her hand, one of those pointed hose <laughs> I mean she comes down my front so she's swinging that fucking hoe <laughs> coming after me god damn and, and, and I go running for my life over to my buddy Jerry's next door and they go flying in it god he was laughing so fucking hard I said that crazy bitch is burning my house down she's after me with a fucking hoe and uh, so we called the goddamn cops. I called the fucking cops to come get her out of there. And uh, so anyway, uh, the cops came and got her. Uh, they went and grabbed her and threw her in the back of the fucking 
a cop car. Last I saw that little psycho bitch was in the back of a police car heading back to Eugene, Oregon. And good fucking God. And I go in and it took me a while to find out, other than trying to burn my house down and decapitate me with a hoe, one thing she had done, it was very dark in the upstairs shower. It was, you know, very bad lighting. So what she had done in the shower is she had gone and broken some beer bottles and had this jagged glass all over the bottom of my, all over the bottom of my shower. And, uh, try, you know, trying to slice my feet up when I stepped into the shower that night and uh, so then of course I went and looked at what the fuck it was she was burning and the and the wood stove and what she had done this was back before this was 1992 I believe it was nine uh, November 92 what she had done you know this is days before cell phones and whatnot so where people still had paper Rolodexes. What she had done was uh, she had gone through my Rolodex, my, you know, my paper Rolodex, and she had pulled out every single uh, Rolodex card with the name of a woman on it. You know, with the woman's name, her address, her phone number, every woman probably that, that I pretty much that I knew in my life. Every single one of my female friends uh, that I knew in my life, that is what she had burned. And uh, then I go to, uh, I, I go and this is back when we still had vinyl albums. And I went to play a record and I pulled the, I pulled this record out. I can't remember which, it was a Bob Dylan record. And the thing was broken in about three pieces. So what she had done was she had gone through my album collection and she had broken like, I'm talking like 400 albums over her knee and then refiled them back in there so I wouldn't notice it. Jesus fucking Christ. I got on the phone. I called her fucking father in Miami. And I... Uh, so uh, th this th th this chick, I think she was 28 years old, and so I called her father in Miami, this Puerto Rican dude living in Miami, and, and I said, dude, uh, I, I want you to send me 500 fucking dollars uh, for the damage that your fucking daughter has caused me. And, uh, and he just apologized profusely, and he said I, I was not the first man he had heard from, he goes, he goes, I gave up on that one the day she turned 18, is what her own father told me. He goes, I am sorry, sir, for the trouble you had, but uh, I gave up on that one the day she turned 18. And then uh, <clears throat> a couple of days later, I actually got a call from the district attorney who somehow had heard that he, you know, about the cops coming to uh, get him, and the DA was telling me that she burned down another man's house, and that she most certainly did have every intention of burning down. He wanted me to press charges against her for attempted arson. Fucking DA, he, he, he goes, this bitch is bad news. Uh, he wanted to lock the fucking bitch up. And I said, man, I said, I am heading to Costa Rica next week. And I said, I just want this fucking bitch out of my life. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, all these goddamn women talking to me about all these angry men. I, I'm not sitting here denying that there's some angry men. It's a fucking... Uh, big bad world out there if you're a woman uh you, you know interacting with men uh gee darling you're gonna run up against some fucking angry men over a lifetime you're gonna run up against some good guys you're gonna run up against some pieces of shit 
uh, that it, it works both ways. Reckon people are people, assholes are assholes, bitches are bitches. It's that fucking simple. Anyway. Since I don't have the medium.com articles, I will just leave it at that. Bye, guys.